Good evening. Welcome to another Mothman podcast. Tonight we're going to be discussing some um, interesting topics for us. I don't know if it's going to be so much for you, but we'll we'll get into it and I'll explain why we're doing it. But I'm your Mothman, Daryl, and with me in the studio is... I'm your co-host, Anne. And Anne, you and I have been talking about a lot here lately, especially about... Uh, dimensions and and space travel and ghost but um trying to tie everything together has been kind of kind of rough but we talk a lot about dimensions and i think if you go back and do some research you'll find dimensions is the basics for most all of the paranormal activity that we're seeing in the world now yes Um, i agree Karl marx made a statement many, many years ago that paranormal is nothing more than somebody trying to come up with a paranormal way to explain the normal happenings on Earth. But, um, you know, most people don't really agree with that. And now people are really doing the research into um, the dimensions, showing that the dimensions are, are a vital input that it's not extraterrestrials that we're looking at when you know people not traveling millions and millions of miles just to poke in and say hi and get out um it there it's it's more of uh, somebody that's been able to manipulate the dimension that they're in to bring them into a dimension with us so in your studies you found out there was how many dimensions there were 11 10 of them uh understood fairly well the 11th uh it just kind of blew my mind yeah and they're probably going to find more because i'm sure that whoever's if they are which makes more sense to me than somebody traveling billions of miles just to poke in and say hey and get out Mm -hmm. um if they are traveling between dimensions they've probably understand a whole lot more than what we're understanding now because it seems like every time we find a dimension um we do more research and we find something else that's that's, that's standing out there. Um, tonight, we're going to talk about three of the dimensions, which I think are um, it, very interesting. And, and what kind of brings us together is, is humans. And the third dimension is, um, is usually explained to us. Um, it's what we're in right now, right? That's correct. It involves length, height, and width, I believe. Okay, so it's kind of like a 3D movie. You know, Correct. it's um, it, that that's the best way to describe it as a 3D movie. And uh, everything that we look around when I'm looking at uh, my cohorts, Dan, you know, I can see a chair behind her and I see different things around the room. So that's giving me a perception of, of um, uh, the 3D. Exactly. It's not just a flat picture. Right. Now, the fourth and fifth dimensions, the fifth dimension is supposedly a lot of people are in the fifth dimension now my um one of my neighbors and a good friend of mine alex does a lot of meditating he took a week off and went to meditation oh nice and what i found out from from looking in the fifth dimension which we'll cover here i've got a little tape that i want to play on the fifth dimension but um it's when we get into our spiritual it's it's more of a um a sound vibration type mm-hmm. dimension. Okay. Um, there's a lot of people in the fifth dimension now that don't realize it, but um, we'll, we'll get into that too. But I'm going to go back to the fourth dimension because I think that's very interesting because that's when they talk about the devil and, and God and devil is all in that dimension. But let me let this lady um, explain it to you a whole lot better than, than Ann and I can because she is been studying this for years and years and years and we're just sticking our toes in the water so please listen to this tape the fourth dimension is special in the sense that it is the widest of the energetic domains it has the largest bandwidth of frequency of all the dimensions inside this universe it has such a broad range of subset realities and such a rich playing field that if there were only one thing to take away from this it would be that the fourth dimension is entirely composed of subset realities. It is the most multidimensional of the dimensions. So it can actually be broken up into the lower fourth dimension and the higher fourth dimension, 
due to how many levels co-inhabit this bandwidth of space and time, yet have vastly contrasting and defining characteristics. The clearest illustration of this contrast is our concept of heaven and hell. The hell realms and the heavenly realms all reside inside the fourth dimension. That's right, heaven and hell aren't as far removed from one another as we may think they are. They both occupy different levels of the fourth dimension. The majority of our belief systems, especially all religious belief systems, are located and occupy some level of the channels within the fourth dimension. They cannot go any higher than the fourth dimension because they are a subjective subset reality that does not accurately reflect the truth of our eternal and infinite nature. They are a mental construct of some kind that is given its own energetic parameters to play out each belief system at different levels in the astral plane. But they are still real to a certain degree. Our thoughts and energy and the amount of attention that we feed into these belief systems make them real enough in their own domain, even if they are not the absolute truth. So although all dimensions are expressing a version of existence and have a perspective that holds a specific gravity, the broad range of experiences that the fourth dimension offers is less concise. The lower astral planes within the fourth dimension all contain ghosts and discarnate spirits. Some of the levels within the fourth dimension also contain malevolent and hostile hyperdimensional entities. So when we talk about negative hyperdimensional entities, they reside somewhere within the construct of the fourth dimension. I'm going to pause right there. That's very interesting because that's the part that you and I dwell in, mm -hmm. is the ghost and the spirits. And I think she's saying within that dimension, that's where the uh, back scratchers and the, 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 bad, the bad stuff, ones, right? Yeah. Because the dimension is stretching between heaven and hell. Okay. Um, and it's, it's supposed to be a very narrow dimension. Mm. But um, that's one of the reasons that that now you look at how ghosts pop in and got, pop out because they're manipulating the fourth dimension. They're just in the next dimension and they can just pop over. Right. Yeah. So we haven't been able to uh, actually, um, I guess, put anything into where we can actually jump from one dimension to another. Correct. Which could be considered maybe time travel, something like that. Gotcha. But um, here we're getting into a lot of quantum theory and <laughs> just getting out yeah. in different ball games. But um, we need to keep that in the back of our mind when we're talking about uh, our ghost and and working within the, the fourth dimension. So I just wanted to stop and, and discuss that for just a second. You got anything else that you want to add to the fourth dimension? Um, for all of the dimensions, I do want to add in that these are theories. They are not absolute concrete proof so well I, and I agree with you on that but what do we actually have when we're you and I are talking about the paranormal mm -hmm. you know we've seen things and we've done things but you know it's just like that little girl out on Old Salisbury Road she yeah. appears to people okay mm -hmm. and if that's really happening that's kind of proof to me that there is a fourth dimension where she can pop in and pop out whenever she wants to gotcha. or, or she gets the energy to mm -hmm. do that. So, you know, I, I'm just kind of trying to bleed off of this and trying to um, put it in my head where I can recognize what's going on. Gotcha. And it's a, a very complicated you know, situation and a very complicated subject, but I think it's a very interesting sub oh, subject. And I, yeah. and I want our, our listeners to um, to start thinking about this too. And, mm -hmm. I, and I'd love to hear some feedback from the listeners. Please, uh, you know, email us at uh, mothmanpodcast at gmail dot com and and give us your thoughts on um, on what you think about the the fourth dimension and things like that. But back to the fourth dimension. There are many esoteric names for the fourth dimension that try to capture the dynamic play of essence that takes place at this level of being. The realm of the gods and the archetypal realm are both names that best describe the power within this realm. The godheads of every religion reside inside the fourth dimension, as well as the ascended masters and all of our favorite deities. If you pray to a specific god or invoke certain beings for some sort of assistance, chances are they most likely reside within the fourth dimension. We all need our fragile fictions, and it's quite common for us to put the responsibility that we don't feel ready to embody 
onto whichever divine figure we share an affinity with. Which is why some of the more benevolent presences inside the fourth dimension pull back from directly aiding us when they feel that their support is making us too dependent on them. I have said this before and I will say this again. No entity in their correct energy wants to have a childlike, worship-based relationship with you. The Masonic themes of light triumphing over darkness, good versus evil, all reside inside the fourth dimension. Meaning the duality that we experience here, whether it's depicted as a checkerboard or through religious imagery of archangels slaying demons, are all central themes to the fourth dimensional arena. It's not to say that evil does not exist, because evil very much does exist, and in more than one form. But the metaphysical battle between forces of light and good, and the forces of darkness and evil, are themes that are generated and projected from the fractured mind of the fourth dimension, which is then depicted in epic metaphor through religious art, holy books, and the collective unconsciousness itself. It's entirely Masonic due to the overarching theme of duality, as well as the rites and rituals that take place to align oneself with certain forces. And last, due to the central feature of higher degrees of knowledge leading to more exalted and elevated rank and position to their Godhead. The fourth dimension is the only dimension other than the third where such elaborate efforts would be invoked for an individual to orient themselves towards the divine. Whereas the fourth dimension is hierarchical in nature, the fifth dimension and beyond are spherical in nature. The cosmic Christ figure has also transformed in the fifth dimension and beyond. Instead of being an external savior, it is an awakened cosmic consciousness embodied within the sovereign being. This is also the arena of space and time where the false light resides. The false light is the biggest challenge to an ascending soul. So if you would like to know all about the false light, let me know in the She's talking about uh, people that are leaving their bodies and they, they see a, a light and the false light is actually evil. Mm -hmm. And they have the ability to pick which light they want to go towards. Okay. And so that's very complicated, and that gets into a religious type, and I don't really want to go there. So um, we'll... Uh, now, I noticed that she uh, pointed out Masons. How did that come into play with the dimensions? <laughs> well... Because she's saying the Masonic right. this and the Masonic that. The Masons, I don't understand. You know, that's the, a very closed-knit organization, which unless you're in, you're in, and you're out, you don't get back in, or you don't get, they just don't talk to one another. Yeah. So, um, or talk to one another about things outside the Mason atmosphere. Yeah, they don't tell their business. Right, they That's, don't tell their business. Yeah. So, um, my, my I, I can't really get into that, degrees, but maybe that's so. uh, there's a lot of research out there on the Masons too. But uh, mm -hmm. I, she's saying that that's a, a highly religious organization. That I'm, I'm, I'm assuming. Yeah. So, all right, back to the. Axioms, as above, so below is referring to the fractal nature of reality, meaning we can understand the nature of what is higher or above us by studying the nature of what is below, which in this case is ourselves and this reality. Due to this law of correspondence, the fourth dimension is the most relevant of all dimensions to our physical experience because the fourth dimension is where the third dimension is actually projected from. When we examine our nature and apply that upward, what we are doing is understanding how the duality, survivalism, and hierarchy within the ego holds the closest reflection in the characteristics of the fourth dimensional realities. And for us to know a higher nature beyond that would require us to access the higher nature within ourselves and within our own being. Physics refer to the fourth dimension as the space-time dimension, commonly depicted as the tesseract, 
But what is less known is that space and time form a fabric. We can regard this fabric as connective tissue, or better yet, a matrix. And this matrix holds the majority of our coding in the third dimension. So not only does it hold the energetic blueprint for our physical incarnation, known as the etheric template, but it also is where the chakra system is projected from. Chakras are a fourth dimensional projection overlaid onto our energy field. They emanate from the fourth dimension and are reconfigured into a one system heart center at a certain point during our own evolutionary process. All of the places a shaman traverses to heal the soul are located somewhere within the fourth dimension. Whether it's journeying into the underworld to break contracts or retrieve an aspect of the soul in the state of soul loss, to recalibrate the chakra system of an individual, or to invoke the assistance of a nature spirit, and so forth. The protocols and methods that shamans utilize for healing, as well as the altered states of consciousness that the shaman journeys to on behalf of the soul, both engage with the fourth dimension. The fourth dimension is the phase of consciousness where universal consciousness starts to really fragment. Fragment to the extent that the concept of God and the devil enter the scene. Beyond the fourth dimension, the being we know as God is known as source or universal consciousness. However, the lower in dimensions we go, the more condensed of a wavelength we experience, meaning the more separate, dense, and divided of an expression consciousness manifests as. And this division applies even to source. So the fourth dimension is where source fragments into the duality of God and the devil. But in this case, the devil is simply the shadow of what we know as God. So God can be looked at as the ultimate ego trip in the entire multiverse, because God at this level of being takes credit and ownership for all of creation, seeks worship, and needs us to be sheep. When in reality, we are simply experiencing spiritual amnesia from our true identity as sovereign beings. So source is the higher expression of God, and God is the ego, the lower dimensional expression of source consciousness. What this means is that ultimately, God and the devil are not separate forces, but divided into distinct personas of universal consciousness. Once wavelengths oscillate slower, condensing matter, and allowing us to experience maximum separation. To put this another way, Source has multiple personality disorder. So if the fifth dimension is where the party's at, the fourth dimension is one hell of a ride we gotta go through to get there. You don't have to love it, chances are you pray to it, but regardless of whether we love it, hate it, or even fear it, we must respect it, both for its power and its purpose. I hope this has helped clarify the shamanic and Masonic qualities of the fourth dimension. Make sure. Yeah, that cleared it up. No. That made it clear as mud. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a lot of good texts in there. Um, when we go back and, and think about um, religion, all the wars that are going on now because of religion and mm -hmm. people's belief, you know, why can't. Well, I don't know why am I going there? I said, why can't people just mind their own business and be what they want to be yeah. and leave everybody else alone to let them believe what they they want to believe? Now, before this, it sounded to me like the dimensions were different places. Right. Now it sounds like they are different levels of consciousness from yes. what she said. Right. So. And, and I think you're right in that. And I think that she's also said there's an upper and a lower. I, I believe that... Um, the um, there is a when we're speaking of ghosts and and um, spirits, I believe there's a solid dimension there that they can travel through, mm -hmm. space through. And and she's also saying that, that a lot of this is internal. Um, so you know, one of them's the higher uh, fourth dimension, one of them's the lower fourth dimension. But from what I took from this, and maybe I'm wrong. Um, is there's two ways to look at the fourth dimension is one internally us in mm -hmm. in the spiritual part being talking about god and the devil and this sort of thing and the other is the solid where the spirits can travel from one dimension to the other and that's where we get the paranormal and the ghost visits and 
entities that that pop in and pop out. Right. So, uh, but here again, you know, when we're talking about dimensions, we say there's. You said there was what eleven now mm-hmm. uh, that we know of, but there's always something new that's popping out there that's all the fact. time. So that's another good. You know, there's a string that we're going to look at and, and things that we're going to talk about. Mm-hmm. But I wanted to go one other dimension up while we're we're doing this, and um, this is a um, signs that you're already living in the fifth dimension. And this is a little video that I wanted to play. I hope Transitioning to the fifth dimension mark a profound shift in the world's vibration, moving from the third dimension to the spiritually awakened fifth dimension. Did you notice every time we talk about uh, any dimensions, we talk about vibrations? Mm -hmm. So it's a combination of um, the, what I call our soul, the the energy that we have in our body that never dies. Mm -hmm. And that it causes vibrations throughout the universe. Mm -hmm. And we're all connected through those vibrations. And I believe that's the way that some people uh, have spoken about their um, when they were captured by captured or, or taken by UFOs mm-hmm. or what's it called now? QPAs or something? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> uh, it, to me it's just another dimensional being mm-hmm. but they communicate and I think they have the ability to home in on those signals that we're giving out mm-hmm. in, in our in our souls, what I call it, because I don't think that ever dies. Okay. It, when our when our physical body uh, gives up and, and goes into back to to ground, it's um, our spirit's still there, and it's in a dimension that uh, we can't we can't comprehend or even see right now. Okay. Back to the video. The third dimension represents the familiar physical world while the fifth dimension is a non-physical realm experienced by those on a spiritual journey. During spiritual awakening, your senses become heightened to adapt to new frequencies. This collective awakening signals the commencement of creating a new Earth. Both the planet and our physical bodies are undergoing ascension. Ascension involves raising your vibration, shedding ego, and moving to a higher level of consciousness. However, this shift doesn't mean waking up to a perfect world. Challenges persist. Instead, these challenges become opportunities for higher consciousness. The fifth dimension is like our current reality, but functions on a higher frequency. It's not about being in a different physical place, but embodying a new frequency level. This shift causes your body, mind, and emotions to vibrate at a higher velocity. Energy body. An energy. Okay. As you energy embark level. on your spiritual gotcha. journey towards the fifth dimension, a significant change occurs in your energy self. It's like a deep inner transformation. Although it might not be something you see with your eyes, you can definitely feel it happening. This transformation involves cleansing out old memories stored in your cells and letting go of outdated energy patterns that no longer match the higher version of yourself you're becoming. Think of it as giving your entire being an upgrade. At first, you might become more aware of the need to release built-up stress from your body and mind. This includes not just the stress you're feeling right now, but also stress that might have been with you since you were a child. This heightened awareness helps you recognize and face long-standing patterns that no longer serve you, making it easier to let them go from your energy system. It's a sacred process of purification and aligning yourself with the higher frequencies of the fifth dimension, your vibration. Another sign of entering the fifth dimension is heightened sensitivity to vibrations. You find yourself better attuned to people's true feelings. You naturally gravitate towards environments with lighter energy, recognizing the impact of your surroundings. There's a realization that your energy is a precious currency, and taking care of yourself is no longer optional. Prioritizing energy hygiene becomes essential in this new dimension. Relationships. Shifting to the fifth dimension brings about deeper, soul-based connections with people. 
you encounter more individuals who feel like they are part of your soul's family, and there's an instant mutual recognition. In these connections, relationships become more equal, fostering honesty as you no longer wish to hide your true self. Inner Truth Entering the fifth dimension makes it challenging to act out of alignment with your inner truth. With expanding consciousness, you find yourself, at times more than you might prefer, acutely aware of the guidance from your heart. Inner Peace Healing your subconscious beliefs leads to an increase in inner peace. This newfound peace not only becomes your regular state, but also takes precedence as your main focus. As your emotional body gradually heals old wounds, it gains stability, and your moods align with this newfound equilibrium. Mutual Help Another sign of moving into the fifth dimension is the realization that you can't save everyone. You understand the importance of respecting others' decisions, even if you believe you have the tools to assist them. This understanding is rooted in respecting free will, a fundamental principle of the universe. You recognize that effective help requires an equal exchange of energy. If someone resists your energy and assistance, it doesn't benefit them. Instead, it can drain you without serving its purpose. Trusting others. Another connected sign of transitioning to the fifth dimension is learning to trust others and their decisions. Strengthening your connection with your higher self allows you to understand that people choose their lessons at the soul level. Rather than worrying about them, you send them love, hold a space for them, and trust in their own timing. This shift reflects a deeper understanding of the soul's journey and the trust that each individual is on their unique path of growth. Your own energy. The journey to the fifth dimension entails a significant purification of energy, a harmonious union between your lower and higher self. Clearing your energetic field empowers you to step into your inner power, fostering clarity of thought and a heightened sense of lightness. Stop being sweet. Embrace your inner power as you transition into the fifth dimension. Within you lies a potent light. Stop holding it back and realize its positive impact on your life. Let go of being overly sweet and insecure. It's time to radiate effortlessly. The shift to the fifth dimension involves your frequency, energy, inner light, and true essence. You, as someone making this transition, might feel the urge to guide others. But remember, you already carry the light within. Sometimes it might feel like you're obligated to shine, but this changes as you embody more of your soul's energy. Soon, you'll want to shine because it aligns with your true frequency. It won't feel like a duty. Instead, you'll experience joy by being your authentic self. Observer. Becoming an observer in your life is a powerful sign that you're moving into a higher, more spiritual dimension, the fifth dimension. Being an observer means taking a step back from your everyday situations. This distance allows your inner, higher self to step in and guide you towards better choices. It's like looking at your life from a higher perspective, helping you avoid getting stuck in the challenges of the lower 3D dimension. When your emotions and thoughts are going through a cleansing process, it's important to be proactive. Listen to your inner guidance. It'll show you how to stay in balance and adjust your energy before things get too overwhelming. Strengthen your energy body. As we shift away from the limitations of the 3D world, we need to heal, reorganize, and strengthen our energy. This step is crucial in moving towards the fifth dimension, a more enlightened state of being. As you make this transition, you'll become more aware of the energy around you. This awareness will lead to changes in your relationships and maybe even your work. By being mindful of the energy you allow into your life, you ensure a more conscious and intentional approach to your surroundings. Multidimensional Self Connecting with your multidimensional self becomes more apparent as you journey into the fifth dimension and beyond. This heightened awareness enables you to consciously shape your reality by simply speaking your intentions into existence, trusting that it will manifest, embracing acceptance. 
Embracing acceptance is vital as you attune to the fifth dimension's frequency. This shift brings a deeper connection to the present moment, fostering a profound acceptance of your life circumstances and past experiences. From this elevated consciousness, you gain a broader perspective, allowing you to embrace both yourself and others more fully. The signs of transitioning to the fifth dimension unfold gradually, influenced by your soul's unique journey of ascension. You might resonate more with some signs than others at this stage. If you're drawn to this video, it suggests you're on a path toward transitioning to the fifth dimension. You know, that's... Um, that rem reminds me a lot of, of um, hypnotherapy. Because, mm -hmm. you know, when I'm trying to close down your cognitive mind and get into your, back into your... Subconscious? Subconscious, mm -hmm. yes, please. <laughs> um, it is a, it's a journey, it's a trip. And you can see when I've put people under that can actually go under, mm -hmm. um, you will see them kind of almost, it's like a... Leaving of the body episode. Mm -hmm. um, it's a journey through your energy, your soul, and your inner vibes. Mm -hmm. And that makes people, I, I guess what we're trying to do is bring out their inner self mm -hmm. and, and go back into that, that what I call the energy source that, that our soul. Uh-huh. Uh, because when you leave your body, you know, it's it's still out there. Now, whether you can enter another body, it, apparently, from what I've been researching with kids, they can, you can, yeah. for whatever reason, come back uh, in another body. So I'm thinking that energy is still there, but yeah. we're trying to get that energy out of the living person now and find out what they did in the past. That the same injury, energy retains memory it retains yes. what uh, emotions it, it retains a lot of things that um, we um, we take for granted I guess every day you know we're just trying to we're trying to get through the day but yeah now there's there have been a lot of people theorizing um, doctors and scientists saying that the brain is not tied to the soul. The stove still has memory, even when the brain is gone. Right. So, and, and I think the brain is our biggest problem, <laughs> and in that, it blocks the mm -hmm. energy because it can only store so much data. Mm -hmm. It's like a computer. You know, you run out of memory. Yeah. So, um, it's the same thing with your brain. You can only store so much. The rest of it is still in there. You can't ever you know do away with a hard drive or anything like that that energy is mm -hmm. still in there you might not be able to bring it out with a broken computer yeah but it's still in there so it's the same way you know in that um, analogy that i'm trying to put out here that uh, you know we're kind of like a computer in some mm -hmm. some aspects of our life but i really believe that, that all that energy is is still there and, and i and i like that um, that you brought out about the the mind because here again, I think our our physical body, the conduit that we're in, mm -hmm. that this energy is stored in, is a hindrance to us seeing the, the truth. Yeah. Okay. I think what I was trying to say to make it a little more clear is that memories and personality, they're saying that they are not tied to the brain. A person that is brain dead you know, they will remember things um, after they are resuscitated. Right. Yeah. And there you go. It's, it's all about the energy, you know, the energy mm -hmm. leaving the body. Yeah. And I think that the energy leaving the body, it still remembers. So it's looking down. Mm -hmm. uh, it not, might not see as you and I see through yeah. our eyes, but it sees and it comprehends what's, yeah. what's going on. And it can see the light and going forward in the tunnel and this mm -hmm. sort of thing and uh -huh. alzheimer's patients that have that last rally um where they kind of come back to all their memories yes. right before they pass away you know there's 
when they look at the brain, they should not be able to re- to remember to have those memories right. because the brain is too far gone. It's too yes. You know, it just they should not have that, but they have those memories when they have that rally at the end. And, and I think that's the spirit getting ready mm-hmm. to come out. Okay? Exactly. So um, the memories came from somewhere, but it wasn't from the brain. Right. And, yeah. and I I know for a fact about this because my mother had Alzheimer's. Mm-hmm. And just before she passed away, before she, the years, maybe 10 years before she passed away, I was always a friend that she knew. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody she played with when she's young. Right. Uh, so she didn't really know who I was. and and But every time I'd walk into a room, my dad would say, do you know who this is? And she would say, oh, this is my friend. We used to play out in the, in the yard together, and we used to mm-hmm. do this, we used to do that. And um, but, but right before she died in the, in the hospital, I walked in, and Dad says, Mother, do you know who this is? And she says, of course, it's Daryl. Mm-hmm. The first time in 10 years she called my name. Exactly, and that so, part of her brain was probably already deteriorated. Gone. Yeah, and this was her soul getting mm-hmm. ready to leave her body. Exactly, and they say that hospice patients. I've, I watch um, some hospice nurses right. on TikTok and YouTube, and they say that hospice hospice patients they have that last rally where they can go from they haven't talked in years, they haven't remembered anybody to like a few days or a, you know a day or so before they pass away everything comes back and it's just like they were before right and this was the vibrations of the soul or the exactly. energy in our body that never mm-hmm. dies and that's um, that's very interesting yeah now when we talk about this fifth dimension one thing that it makes me think they call it a fifth dimension but it sounds to me more like maturity and aging i've found that a lot of these things are true since i've entered my 40s where they weren't true i didn't think like that when i was in my 30s and 20s and teens right and i think we have the ability to train ourselves younger Mm -hmm. to be like this yeah um you're right aging does give you more wisdom Mm -hmm. Uh, some of us more wisdom anyway uh and so my question would be are we going into another dimension as we're aging? I think we are. We're, we're going into the fifth dimension. Yeah. And some people can go further with the fifth dimension than mm-hmm. other people can go. Exactly. And like teenagers now, are they still in the third dimension? Were, when I was a teenager, were my grandparents in the fifth dimension? That That's what that makes me wonder. Some of them I've seen has been in the first dimension. <laughs> they're, just, they're just laying there. Just spot. Yeah. It's just a flat picture. Yeah. Um, but like my neighbor, like I said, and he is very much into um, going and, and just doing mind, mm-hmm. you know, just mind exercises and um, he um, he tried to to come over and he gave it me the hum mm-hmm. trying to get there you've got to practice you got to get there I can't close my mind down completely anymore to to get that to that point but you've got to be able to do that now I can probably hypnotize myself to do that and and be fine with it but I just I guess I'm not at the point where I really want to go there mm-hmm. you got to really want to go there yourself or it's not going to happen true and I am not at the point to where I want to step out of reality into something that maybe I can't control. Maybe that's being a cop all my life. I've, I've just, yeah. I need to be a vigilant of what's going mm-hmm. on around me and with everything going on in the world today. But um, I, the people that really get into the fifth dimension can, um, what am I What am I trying to say? It's kind of like a Zen or a, mm-hmm. um, they put themselves in a, um, I wish I had Alex here now. And we need to have stuff. him one day. Yeah, we'll get, if I can get him on here. Uh, it's one of those things where he can really shut his mind down. Mm-hmm. And he says that he's got to go have his quiet time. Gotcha. And he um, he goes and, and then he just shuts everything off and he mm-hmm. can go into his own world and shut down. Yeah. I haven't reached that point yet. And I, and I wish I could because it probably would make me feel better. But it's just... I've got so much going that um, it's like last night. I didn't, 
I didn't go to sleep at like 3.30 because my mind mm-hmm. was racing with different things about yeah. the podcast, different things about uh, how am I going to grow the podcast? How am I going to... Uh, I'm, I'm researching doing some some audio books, uh-huh. uh, Mothman audio books. Okay. And so it's just all that stuff was yeah. just right out there. Um, so I just... And I'm having to sleep in a chair now. I had, I'm a Vietnam veteran, so I have skin cancer and I had to take a... I have 27 stitches in my chest where they took uh-huh. a hunk of skin out trying to get all the cancer. Mm-hmm. I hope they got it all. Yeah. I'm sure they did. Um, See, that's where you need to where you need to shut your mind down and use that meditation as a way to manifest. So you shut your mind down, you're just going to have to practice it. Right. And you start to manifest or you start to meditate and then you maybe visualize how it will feel when you go to the doctor. And he tells you all the cancer is gone. Yeah. Yeah. So and you do just, that. You put right. that into a practice often. And it's, you know, from what I understand, it should help you manifest that wellness in your life. I agree. I agree with you. And there's but a common place for that. Hearing it and doing it is different True. things. You know, it's just like yeah. people call into us, you know, on the podcast. But uh, yeah. And you can't do it all the time. There's a time and a place for it. Uh, there's a time and a place for your mind to be racing. Right. My mind races a lot because I feel like I have so much to do. Right. Just to, you know, I want to I want to learn this. I want to learn this. I want to learn this. But maybe when I go to bed at night, if I'm just laying there and can't sleep. I will do some meditation. Right. And that's that's good. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of music out there that I like to listen to to try to meditate. Yeah. Um, I like listening to rainfall in the forest and mm-hmm. things like that. It kind of calms me down. Yeah. And when I'm tr- really uptight and want to really calm myself down, I try to picture a spring mm-hmm. like up at the farm and yeah. listen to the water running across the rocks. And that can bring my blood pressure down yeah. quite a few points. And there are so, also meditation podcasts and YouTube yeah. videos, and I think they are just priceless, right? Because there's so much you can learn from them. Well, I'm hoping that uh, you and you and I can do um, some hypnosis, and so that the the viewers and the listeners, I hope we'll do one and, and put it on YouTube Absolutely. for the uh, to see exactly what I'm talking about about a person mm-hmm. just relaxing and, and getting yeah. there and that's the hardest thing to do is just getting people to relax yeah. I'm a very laid back person very calm so I don't think you're going to have a huge problem, problem me. getting me to relax yeah. I, I've, I've got some I've had some people that uh, what aggravates me the most is like somebody comes in and says well can you make me stop smoking <laughs> uh, do you want to stop smoking no my, my wife wants me to stop smoking do you want to stop smoking? Well, not really, but my wife wants me to stop smoking. You've got to want to. Well, your wife will probably not smoke, but you will because mm-hmm. <laughs> you really want to smoke. So yeah. I'm you interested. can't stop somebody from doing something they want to do. I'm telling you that now. Exactly. And I don't want you to try to change anything about me. I like me. Yeah. However, I would like to see if I have had previous lives. Yeah. It's um, it's very interesting, especially when people go really deep. Mm-hmm. And the deeper you go, the the further back you go yeah so I haven't run into anybody that was a queen or king or anything like that I do feel like there's got to be a princess or a queen someone in, in there somewhere in because there. I am so just bougie sometimes <laughs> <laughs> I expect you know I'll tell my husband oh I, I'm not gonna lift that can you take that inside or you know something like All that right. Well, I was hoping you'd come back as Blackbeard, so you tell me where you hit your treasure. Well, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> if I tell you, you better tell me. <laughs> well, I've enjoyed tonight's podcast. I have, too. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, please tell your friends and your neighbors and your family to listen to our podcast and help it grow. Yes, We appreciate that. everything you do for us. And so, especially what? I'm sorry. We do want you to hit that follow button and share our podcast with your friends and family and neighbors. If we haven't gone over something that you have in mind, please email us and we'll look into it. And we plan on just going um, studying all things paranormal. And we'd be more than happy to take your stories. Yeah, we, we would love to have your stories. We're starting to get some emails, and I'll get with Ann about those emails. Shortly. Oh, wonderful. And um, we'll, we'll 
share some of them on the radio. But, yes. You know, it's like I said before, you don't have to identify yourself and you don't have to, um, uh, or if you do identify yourself and you say for us not to identify you, that's that's a done deal. We're not going to, we're not going to identify you. Yes. And I'm more than happy to read your stories for you. And like I said, we'll look into them, see if we can prove them, see if we can disprove them, see if we can find more information about them. And we'll do the research. You just give us the, the chance to do it. So until next time, this is the Mothman, Daryl. And this is the co-host, Dan. Saying good night. Good night.